Hi, I'm Mike from Radio.co and I'm here at the Manchester Escalator to meet John Cranmore. John is a freelance radio producer who recently worked with us on the Radio Everyone project. We can be. We must be. The first generation to end extreme poverty. The generation most determined to fight injustice and inequalities. The generation that saves the planet from climate change. And this is how it will get done. The global goals. A 15-year plan for everyone, everywhere. With no one left behind. My name's John Cranmer. I'm a freelance radio producer and I've been working in the sector for about 17 years now. Can you tell us about the Radio Everyone project and what it was set up to try and achieve? Sure. So uh, Radio Everyone was a part of a wider project um, called Project Everyone. Essentially it was uh, designed to promote the global goals which were 17 targets to achieve um, sustainable development over the next 15 years. Can you go into a bit more detail about specifically how you used our software and how that helped you to manage the schedule that you broadcast around the world? The unique thing that we wanted to get from Radio Everyone, from the pop-up radio station, was that wherever you were in the world, you would get pointed towards a language stream, one of ten language streams, yeah. which was closest to, to your native tongue. Um, so I was faced with the prospect of scheduling uh, seven days worth of content in ten different languages and it became quite apparent that the only way we could do this was to basically work with someone that had a pretty sophisticated scheduling system for the, for the content to be played so um, it was on the recommendation actually of uh, a guy called uh, Sam at Reform Radio who mentioned you guys and so having kind of got in touch and played around a little bit with the kind of uh, with the system realized that it was going to be so much easier to schedule the content but what was great about radio.co was that um, it was it was very easy to upload the content make sure that it, you know actually kind of create those playlists color code them you know it's just think, little things like that actually being able to color code it made a massive difference because i knew that like the green show related to you know Cody Simpson's environmental show or whatever it was so actually having just little little things like that really really helped um, and like I say just just being able to kind of like see the week and see where everything slotted in uh, was just massively helpful. Did using our service make the whole process of broadcasting the station easier then? Absolutely yeah it made it it made it so much easier than I thought it was going to be I, I knew very little about streaming before working on this project and within a few days I felt like I was an expert. <laughs> um, I mean one of the things that was absolutely kind of key was that we wanted to be able to um, add additional content and change the schedule around once we were broadcasting. So from the evening that we went live we knew that probably two days later, three days later we'd have to add stuff in and maybe rejig stuff depending on whether there was edits that needed to be redone or whatever yeah. it was. So the fact that it, the everything's cloud based it meant that we could just do that from wherever. It didn't really matter like whether I was necessarily like in front of a computer or on my iPhone there was ways of basically jigging things around which made a massive massive difference. Being able to have a really granular control over the schedule is quite important. Absolutely. So for example the shows that were presented by the uh, Brazilian pop acts you know we wanted to make sure that time wise that worked with you know we didn't want that going out at 4am in Brazil we wanted that going out at kind of 7 in the evening. So that was great for us just being able to kind of work a schedule and then actually sort of change things around and make sure that that kind of very precise uh, playlisting was kind of available to us. I think if we hadn't have had that then I don't think the project would have kind of hit home in the way it did. Would you determine it as a success? I mean it was a, an amazing, amazing success really. We reached um, listeners in 117 different countries via the streams um, which is phenomenal and we reached somewhere in the region of 253 million listeners which is absolutely amazing. So who were kind of some of the celebrities involved in the project? Musicians and bands, there was people like Kasabian, Paloma Faith, Rita Ora, Cody Simpson. We also had quite a few film stars and actors that contributed to uh, Radio Everyone. We had Kate Blanchett, Hilary Swank, uh, Michelle Yeoh, um, an English actor called Mark Strong. Um, 
most of them were presenting documentaries, but Kate Blanchett and her husband did an, a very interesting uh, music show, which is all connected to kind of themes of belonging. So do you think, in general, with pop-up radio stations, do you think we'll start seeing more of them? I think the, the kind of the sort of level playing field that you've got now when it comes to entering radio and entering broadcasting is fabulous and it, it does mean that the kind of the barriers of entry to the, to the kind of uh, to the sector are just are just not there and I think that's an exciting prospect and I think that the more that you've got that integration of internet radio with you know your DAB receivers you know the more that continues and the more the wider palette that people have got people have got to, to accessing shows around the world you know, that's got to be a good thing. What's the grand plan for Global Goals and Radio Everyone and Project Everyone? I think it's perfectly achievable that we can end extreme poverty by 2030, but it really will take a lot of effort on the part of us in the developed world and, well, people everywhere really, to put pressure on politicians to, to make that a priority. So I think if by 2030 that has been solved, then it's been a success.